Hi, in this series of videos we're going to be looking at GCSE Maths Walkthrough. Each of the playlists is going to be about four or five videos. Each video will be about 20 minutes long. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you do need any help, please add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Hi, this is the fourth video in the series where we're looking at the AQA Higher Tier Paper 2 from June 2018. In the previous video, we completed through to question number 24. So we're going to start with question number 25, which is um, a fairly challenging Venn diagram question. So please do have a go at this and um, and then compare your solution. So the probability that a physics student chosen at random also studies chemistry is 512. So in other words, the probability is of these guys. Um, and it's those ones that we need to be able to figure out first. And when we've got this amount of information in here, we can then figure out the probability that the student does not study either chemistry or figure, physics. In other words, we need to know why. OK, so once we've got X, we can then add all this together, take it away from 150 students and then we can figure out why and therefore we can figure out the probability. Seems a little bit daunting and it's one of those questions where I think it is worthwhile trying to kind of have a go at this just to see if you can kind of work it out for yourself. All right, so let's have a look. Well, the first thing is we've got to look at this central area here. OK, so it says the probability that a physics student, well, what's the amount of physics students available? Well, the amount of physics students is going to be X plus 35. It's going to be those students who are they study physics, but they also study chemistry and those students who just study physics. So the amount of physics students altogether is going to be that amount. OK, and then the ones that we're interested in who have got a probability of five out of 12 are actually X. So in other words, we can write a formula. We can write that X out of X plus 35 equals five twelfths. OK, and then really it's a case of solving for X. All right, so hopefully the logic behind that particular uh, thinking is OK for you. Um, it, again, if you're not sure, please add a comment below and I'll do my best to support you. OK, so what I'm going to do in order to solve this, I need to solve it for X, I'm going to cross multiply. OK, now hopefully you're familiar with this. That it's just kind of easier to cross multiply and write that as 12X equals 5 times x plus 35. OK, and when I expand that bracket, I'm going to get 12x equals 5x plus 35 times 5 is 175. OK, now I need to find my value of x, so I minus 5x from both sides. Um, I'm going to get 7x equals 175 divide through by 7 and actually I'm going to get x equals 25 well that's great it's a whole number so it must mean there are 25 students in that central group okay so I'm relieved about that that's kind of worked out all right for me okay so in other words we can say that 25 students study both physics and chemistry. All right, and that's great because now we're in a position where we can say, actually, if we want to work out why, in other words, the number of students that study neither, it's going to be 150, which is overall, minus the 47 who study only chemistry, minus the 35 who study only physics, minus the 25 who study um, physics and chemistry. OK, and once I've worked that out, I should get left with 
uh, y equals 43. So in other words, there are 43 students who don't study either subject. All right, that's fine. So then it says, work out the probability that the student does not study either chemistry or physics. Well, the answer to that then is going to be a number of 43 out of the 150 students that we've been looking at in this particular question. OK, I hope that's all right for you. Let's try and move on then to question number 26. OK, so on to question 26. This says a curve has the equation of that and a line has the equation of that show that the curve and the line have exactly one point of intersection. So what we're really getting at is that um, the first one is the graph of a quadratic equation. So it kind of looks probably a little bit like that. I, I'm not particularly, it's only just a sketch. It's not a particularly good sketch, but it'll just give you some idea. And then what we're saying is the line, um, straight line has an equation of y equals x plus two. So it's gonna go through two on the y axis about there, and then it's gonna just touch the quadratic equation. So hopefully this will give you some idea of how we're going to solve that. Now the main thing with this is it says um, y equals 4x squared plus 5x plus 3 and y equals x plus 2. So if both of them equal to y then both of them must be equal to each other. So we can write that x plus 2 equals 4x squared plus 5x plus 3. And then really it's a case of making this equal to 0 and finding a way to solve it. In other words, find the values of x. OK, so in order to do that, I'm going to bring this x over towards the right hand side. Now remember, I want to equal to 0. So if I bring that x over, it's going to be 4x squared. And I've got plus 5x minus x is plus 4x. OK, and then I've got 2. Well, I need to minus 2 from both sides. So 3 minus 2 is going to be plus 1. OK, now the best way of solving this probably is going to be using the quadratic formula. Now, again, this is something that will come up in these sorts of exams and it's remembering the formula. And it's always a good idea to write it out as x equals minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now if we look at the actual equation we can say that a equals 4 which is this first value, b also equals 4 and c equals positive 1. Now they're all positive so that makes my life a little bit easier when I actually plug the numbers in. Okay so let's do that. So we've got x equals minus b is minus 4 plus or minus the root. Well b squared is 16 minus 4 times a which is also 4 multiplied by 1 all divided by two lots of 4 which is 8. OK, so in other words, what it's looking like is we're actually only going to get a single value of X for this. OK, now the reason that is, is that effectively I've got X equals minus four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 16, which is zero divided by eight. OK, so let's have a look at how that actually plays out. Well, I've got minus four plus nothing divide, uh, divided by eight or I've got minus four minus nothing divided by eight. So in other words, this is kind of redundant to me. I'm just going to end up with X being equal to minus four over eight, which is X equals minus, uh, sorry, minus 0 0.5. OK, and that would be the single point of contact, um, the X value. OK, so if we go back to our graph, it's not drawn particularly well, I'm afraid, but it means that the value of X is going to be over here somewhere and it's actually going to come up and it's going to cross 
along here. It's not, not a great diagram, but hopefully it'll give you some idea of what was going on there. OK, so now I find my value of X. I need to now find my value of Y. So when I can I can say that when X equals minus 0.5, Y must equal if we go back to our original quote um, uh, formula, x plus 2. So y is going to equal to x plus 2, which is minus 0 0.5 plus 2, which is equal to 1.5. OK, so I've shown that it's got exactly one point of intersection because I can't solve this. And you might want to put a line in there or something to say that it's the square root of nothing plus or minus nothing is kind of irrelevant. OK, uh, but we've got one point of intersection. And that is going to be when X equals minus 0 0.5, Y equals 1.5. OK, I hope that's OK for you um, and you're able to work through this. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're not sure, please do add a comment below. There is also a playlist on the web on the uh, channel where you're able to have a look at some other examples of these sorts of questions. OK, let's move on then to question number 27. We're getting towards the end of our paper now. So question 27 is a very, very standard um, GCSE type question. Prove algebraically that 2.75 recurring. So what that means is, is that if I say, well, that's x, x equals 2.75555 dot dot dot, as long as you want it to be. OK, so the standard way of solving this is to say, OK, well, if x equals that, then we can say that 10x equals 27.5555 because all I've done is I've moved the decimal points along by one place but what it does allow me to do is if I subtract one from the other I should be able to get then a fractional equivalent of x okay so let's have a go at that so I'm going to write it the other way around so 10x equals 27.5555 dot 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 and I'm going to take away x, which equals 2.7555 dot 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 and pop that into um, a normal sum. OK, well, if I do that, I'm going to get 10x minus x is 9x. OK, and 27.5 recurring minus 2.75 recurring is going to be 24.8. OK, so let's have a look. Now, bearing in mind, they want us to convert to this fraction. So basically, we've got to take this and manipulate it somehow so it looks like that. OK, so let's have a go at that. Well, if I divide through by 9, I'm going to get x equals 24.8 all divided by 9. Now, that's not really great because what we've got there has got a mix of decimals and fraction and all that sort of stuff. Now, you could use a calculator if you wanted to, but we need to show it. So I would do 248 over 90 if I multiply top and bottom by 10. And then if I just divide by 2, I'm going to get 124 over 45. And that would answer the question. OK, hope that's all right. Um, should be fairly straightforward. These sorts of questions do crop up an awful lot. OK, let's finish this particular paper now by working through question numbers 28 and 29. Um, please do stop the video. Have a go at this. OK, so we're going to simplify function of 2x plus g to the x minus 1. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look at that. Well, Function of x is 5 minus 2x. OK, so if we want to work out then the function of 2x, we're going to have so function of x equals 5 minus x. So therefore, the function of 2x, which is this first bit here, is going to be equal to 5 minus 2x. All we're doing is we're doubling the value of x. OK, then let's look at g to the x minus 1. So this is the next bit of it. So this is g 
to the x minus 1. Well, we know what g to the x is. So g to the x minus 1 is going to be 3 times x minus 1 plus 7. And if we work that out, we're actually going to get that it equals to 3x plus 4. OK, so we've now got our two component parts. We've got this bit and we've got this bit. And if we want to add those two together, which it's asking us to do in the question, then all we simply do is we write 5 minus 2x plus 3x plus 4. OK, work that out. I've got minus 2x plus 3x. Well, that's going to be plus x. OK, and then 5 plus 4 is 9. So my answer will be x plus 9. OK, so it seems really tricky when you looked at the particular question, but actually it wasn't too bad, really. OK, so let's have a look at the next bit of it. OK, so what we're going to do then is we've got g to the minus 1 of x equals 2x. All right, well, let's have a look firstly at g to the minus 1 of x. OK, well, the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, well, actually, I've got g to the x from the previous question is equal to 3x plus 7. Now, the technique that we do is we say, well, OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that g to the x to y and I'm going to make x the subject. OK, so if I do that, then let's just have a look and see how that works. So y equals 3x plus 7. OK, remember that now I want to make x the subject. So I'm going to minus 7 from both sides. I get y minus 7 equals 3x. Divide through by 3 and I get x equals y minus 7 over 3. And then what we do is we change it back again. OK, so we change this y back to x and we change this x to g to the minus 1 of x. OK, so let me write that out again. If you're not sure about any of these, there's plenty of examples. There's actually um, a playlist on this on the uh, channel that you'll be able to access. OK, so we've now got our value of g to the minus 1, which is this value here. And we're going to say it's equal to 2x. All right, that's fine. So basically, it's going to allow us then to just solve the equation for x. So I'm going to write it up here. Uh, I'll just follow that up there. I've got x minus 7 over 3 equals 2x. OK, so the problem I've got there is I've got a denominator of 3. Well, I don't want that there. So I'm going to basically multiply both sides by 3 and I'm going to get x minus 7 equals 3 times 2 is 6x. All right. Now, just be really careful about this. You do want positive values of x if you can. So I'm going to bring this x over to the right hand side, take away x and I'm going to get minus 7 equals 5x. And if I divide through by 5, I'm going to get x equals minus 7 over 5. And that actually is the answer. OK, we've solved it for x. So x equals minus 7 over 5 or minus 1.4 if you prefer a decimal. OK, that comes to the end of this particular paper. I hope it's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below. If you're not sure about anything, always come back to you. Have a look at some of the other playlists on the channel. That should give you plenty of ideas of other types of questions, particularly things like these indices questions. Uh, these come up quite uh, quite quite commonly, actually. Functions questions, not indices. OK, hope it's been helpful to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.